Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here. We're going to start taking a look at some of the toys I brought back from Robocon. And this one seemed to be one of the more requested. That was either him or the model kit. Nobody really specified, but we haven't built the model kit yet, so we will take a look at the Power of the Primes version of Nemesis Prime. Like I said, this is the Power of the Primes toy. It's one of the leader class evolution figures. So it's basically got a smaller figure contained in here, and the rest of the famed trailer forms the rest of the body. And of course, this toy of Nemesis Prime was not available on retail store shelves. This was an online exclusive to Amazon. So, many of us, if you don't have an Amazon account, you probably missed out on this toy. Hopefully they've still got a few somewhere. If not, you are going to pay the price for him. And of course, Nemesis Prime also includes a bonus figure. He's got this bird called Giza. And basically, Giza doesn't do much. But the only thing Giza does, you fold up the sword blades a bit and bring them up like that, and there you go. Now you got another sword. So you can instead take the rifle out and you can hold the other sword. Thankfully, the way the robot kibble is on the back, you can easily store Nemesis's rifle on his backside. Now, of course, Nemesis Prime in the lore is said to be a dark, twisted clone of our beloved Optimus Prime. And as you can imagine, these toys are extremely similar to each other. Which is a good thing, because it means it's pretty easy to figure them out in terms of transforming them as well, because they will have the same method of transformation with only slight differences between the two. But it also means they both share the same problems. Optimus here has long been criticized for having some severe quality control issues on Hasbro's end. So once again, we can make fun of the famed Hasbro cheapness, but... The level that apparently this goes to is that apparently finding a decent one like this version here intact and such is pretty difficult. So it's kind of Hasbro. If you do another idea like this again, please work it out a little better. But apparently these primes have been known especially to have the hands will be incorrect. It'll be the wrong hand on the wrong side and unfortunately a lot of those flaws as well extend to nemesis prime and that's the thing that i really hate about it is the fact that if that quality control is that poor on a toy that's an exclusive that's gonna upset your fans since we're gonna be dropping extra money for this toy and we got to take a chance as to whether or not it's in good shape or not. And that's even before we've taken it out of the box and had the chance to ruin it ourselves. So, real nice there, Hasbro. But of course, for those of you that are interested, this leader series also included Rodimus Prime. And by the very same spectrum... On the opposite end, it also included Rodimus Unicronus. Now, if there's any of them that you see here that you'd like me to review in a future video, please drop a line in the comments and say so. These are all mine, so if you want to see them reviewed, say so. We'll take a look at them. And of course, Nemesis here has gotten a lot of attention recently 
especially thanks to the live-action films. So I guess for once we can give some gratitude to Michael Bay, but I don't think you're going to hear too many of us actually be willing to admit it. But let's face it, early dra early releases of shots from both the Age of Extinction and the, the Last Night did seem to tease us at the possibility that this character was going to appear in the films. Unfortunately, the final product did not include this figure. Take that as you may. But, at any rate, let's take a good look at this Nemesis Prime. And we'll start by looking at his articulation. We can turn his head from side to side, and it is on a ball joint, so it will look up and down a little bit. We can raise his arms up at the shoulder, all the way up, like so. Also has the ability to rotate at the shoulder, just as easily. Trying to keep him standing. Plus he can bend at the elbow about 90 degrees, and he does have a swivel at the bicep. So he does have the swivel arm battle grip. He doesn't turn at the hip, unfortunately. But his legs do spread out at the hip, like so. He does have a joint at the hip that allows you to raise the leg up about so far. He can also bend at the knee about 90 degrees. And he does have an articulated ankle. So he is very poseable. I will give him that much. Now we're going to go into the process of slowly transforming Nemesis Prime. And of course, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to remove all of his weaponry to get all the weapons out of the way and try to do it without knocking him down. <laughs> Those ankle joints are pretty loose. Of course, there are some of them that do break pretty easily, so... Again, another reason to be very delicate with this toy. Now, before we go too much further, there is something I do want to show you all. We do have access to a matrix in here. Simply by opening up his chest cavity like so. And then we reach inside and we open the interior one like so, and there is a matrix inside. It's very similar to how Optimus took it out in the original animated movie, so that's that's a nice homage. Okay, right here is the dark matrix that was inside of him. Now, for some strange reason, mine came with two. So I had one inside the package, but there was another one inside him already. So I have no idea how that managed to happen, but if you buy one of these semi-loose, you might want to check on that. And of course, as this was done during the Power of the Primes, the Matrix Core can be ejected. And then you can replace this with any of the Prime Masters that was available. And grant Nemesis Prime some special powers. Unfortunately, Nemesis Prime doesn't come with one of the collector cards like the others did. So you're kind of left to guess as to what exactly the special powers will be. But if you got enough of them, you can, figure, you can probably figure it out. Alright, let's... Close this back up. Now, to separate the small robot from the trailer, we turn him around here, and there's a little lever here, right at his hip. So you would pull that down, and then we push on the chest to disengage the 
smaller robot. And then we'll just set the trailer aside here. Set the armor aside so that we can do the trailer later. But first of all, we'll start transforming this into the truck cab. Of course, to do that first, we will fold out the rear section to be the legs. Then you will rotate it so that the wheels will be facing the ground. And then you can connect them together like so. Just exactly like that. And then now you'll take this little black and red section here in the middle. You will fold it downward until it rests on the legs. You'll rotate this other head that's in here around like so. And then fold it out so it lays flat like that. And then you'll fold in the big Nemesis Prime head. The arms here, we're going to rotate them at the elbows towards the front. Then you'll fold the shoulder units all the way into the back. Like so. Just exactly like that. Now, the front armor pop out like so and fold it back snap it into place along the sides just exactly like that then we can fold down the sides of it and snap it into place of course you do it gently because you don't want to break it these toys are pretty easy to break. And there we have him in the truck mode. Since unfortunately that's the first step they show us is how to put him in the truck mode. So for the time being we'll put him in the truck mode. Rolls pretty decently on this table so I'll give them credit on that. They at least didn't skimp out on that part for us. Now to work the rest of the body into the trailer. We will first start. We'll turn him around here so that you can all see this. You take the smokestacks here and you will fold them down into the shoulders. And we'll spin him around again. These side panels here on the arms will fold down to go out in front of the fists. And then we raise the arms up entirely like so. Making sure that the shoulder tops do slide in under this panel. The next we're going to move down to his feet. And the ankles, you're going to fold up at the top of the ankle, and then right at the base of the foot. So that they look like this. They're running flush against the robot, not hanging downward a bit like they were earlier. And now we're going to spread his legs a little bit. You're going to pull out this section here behind his leg unfold everything outward like so. Just exactly like that. Do it again here on the opposite leg. Just exactly like that. Now once you've got everything unfolded then you can connect the legs together like so and then you will fold the sides up part of them should snap into a piece on the ankles on his feet that is provided we got him connected and he is not dirty twerp The 
should connect like so. And then... And we'll fold down the back portion here simultaneously and connect them together as well. Just exactly like that. Relatively simple. A pain in the neck, but relatively simple. And next we're going to bend him up a little bit at the knee and the hip to raise him up a little. And then that's when we flip the arm, fold the arms over. And bringing them down. We're also going to rotate them around. And then we fold out the side panels here. Just like that. We're going to keep these smaller ones folded inward. Because next we're going to rotate the arms up. We also got to keep rotating the fists. Because the fists are going to go right in here into this cavity there. We'll rotate it so we keep the panels lined up here out front. Don't worry if these panels here don't snap into place. Because that will be used for his attack mode. But of course, before you get him too totally sealed up, you want to get the gun. Especially if we're going to do the attack mode and connect it to these posts in here. So that way it will be attached. Like so. And then of course down here in the upper front, in the front area. There's a very little spot that you can fold out. To be a hitch. Oh yeah, and of course by now we also got to fold over these little tiny panels to fully form the whole sticker on the trailer. There we go. And there's the trailer built. We should get Nemesis over here and connect the post in to the front. And there we go. Now of course these panels here for attack mode, we just fold them out. And you can attach the gray guns into them. Like so. Then you can mount the giant red sword on the top of the trailer. And of course, Giza, when he's in sword mode, he's got a little rectangular post here, which will happen to fit into this rectangular hole on the sword. And there you go. And you certainly have here a semi-truck that'll probably run you over just as easily as the one seen in Duel and Maximum Overdrive. How does it roll with the trailer attached? Pretty good, actually. The connection between the truck and the trailer actually holds up pretty good and does stay in there pretty tightly. Although you can just as easily turn it, but it doesn't turn by itself easily. So, that's definitely a nice feature on this toy. Now, of course, we got one more bonus figure to go along with this. As the truck here becomes another figure. To transform it, we want to make sure the arms are all the way up, like so. Then we're going to come up here to the front and flip up the wheels. Like that. And then, of course, we shall pop them free from the side. And fold the wind, fold it all the way up front. Like 
There we go, just like that. Then we can fold the shoulders back out. And this time rotate the arms forward. And fold them straight down. Like that. And this piece here that was laying down can be raised up. And then fold it down to form a head. Pop this section loose. Fold it downward like so. And rotate it so that the tires are on the back side. And of course down here underneath it. We fold out the feet. And then here we have Nemesis Pax. Basically an evil clone of Optimus Prime's original form of Orion Pax. Rotate these hands a little bit better. Ah, apparently there's a little step in here. A little piece rotates out like so. That'll get his hands out. So now we've got him complete. Got a smile for the camera, Nemesis Packs. Now, of course, while he can use any of the swords or the guns, the instructions usually say that you can take the rifle, and you can separate it into two guns, and then he can go out with dual guns blazing. Which, I don't know, that doesn't look too bad. But at any rate, it is an interesting setup. Of course, how well articulated is the small robot? Well, let's see. As we demonstrated earlier, we can turn his head from left to right. This one, unfortunately, since it's the support for the trailer, it does not go up and down. The arms can be brought out only about so far. But it does swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He does have a joint at the elbows, so he can bend his arm at the elbow in two different places. And of course, swivel at the bicep. He can spread his legs apart about so far. He can raise his leg up at the hip about so far and he can bend his leg at the knee 90 degrees and he does have a joint at the ankle so not quite as articulated as his fully armored version but that's not really a problem considering what you're getting out of it I'd say they've done a fairly decent job with this toy actually and of course, for the benefit of those who may buy this toy loose, it should at least be nice and show you all the pieces that it should have. It should have one large black gun that can separate into two smaller guns. It's basically meant to look like Optimus Prime's Ion Blaster. Or, you know, should have only one dark matrix of leadership. So basically, you got a black plastic ring and a purple core with a trans red center. You can see the light goes through it pretty nice. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. should have two of these dark gray guns so 
So we have one giant sword with a red blade. And you'll have a smaller dark gray sword that easily opens up and rotates around to form Giza. And that's all of the loose parts for Nemesis Prime. Now we'll get down to my thoughts. What do I think of this figure? This is a rather interesting figure. I mean, I'll admit, when I first picked up these Evolution figures last year, I was a bit skeptical of them. But my curiosity did compel me. As I wanted to see how did they make the transformation work to include the smaller robot and the larger one. And I will admit that the ingenuity and engineering that went into making them is a bit impressive. So definitely kudos to the designers and engineers of these toys because you obviously had your work cut out for you to make this work. As for Nemesis Prime himself, eh, this isn't bad. This is one of the easier to obtain toys of Nemesis Prime. There aren't that many out there, and this one's one of them that's relatively still easy to obtain. As I myself, I didn't buy this off of Amazon. I bought it off of another, bought it at another location. As I said, I didn't bring him home from Robocon, but he was there at Robocon. I had bought him just before I left for Robocon, so technically he can still count as part of my Robocon stash. But, I do like it. I will admit it, hands down, I do like this toy. The posability on it is impressive. It's not perfect, but it's not bad either. It also gives us a character that we don't see too much done on. And of course, interest in the character has increased, partially thanks to Michael Bay, but we can also say that the card game has also raised interest in Nemesis Prime, as he was one of the cards in the original wave. And one of the most powerful, depending on who you ask. And all in all, in general, you do get a fair amount for this figure. Is he worth the exclusive prices you may have to pay? Probably not. That's the only thing that's really going to bother me about this, is that he will be expensive to buy on the market in any condition, really, because of him being only available at Amazon, whereas all the others could be bought at the store. So, that, and there's also the quality control issues that were done with this toy. It's kind of one of those that, if the quality control was that bad, Hasbro should have yanked these guys away, and not release them again until they had them fixed. I mean, yeah, I know that's not good business to take away to take a product off of the shelves, but it's also not good business to make us pay a fortune for these things and you mess them up at the factory. Especially when you consider the fact that as stated earlier, this one's an exclusive. So, he usually means more cost. And, unfortunately, I think Hasbro may have hosed quite a few people in this deal with Amazon on this one. Hopefully, for the Siege toys, any of them that'll become Amazon exclusives are a little better designed so they don't have these kind of issues. Yeah, my viewers, if, you like it, if you're interested in this toy, I would definitely recommend you seek it out. So I think it's pretty good. Or if you don't think you can afford this one, see if you can find the regular Optimus Prime cheap and 
mod it. I wouldn't put it past a lot of other Transformer collectors out there that have probably done that. To avoid having to pay the price. Of course, you don't get Giza or the other sword or the silver guns, but I guess that's a fair trade-off, I guess. <laughs> anyway, to each, your, each their own. And that concludes my review of the 2018 Power of the Primes version of Nemesis Prime. If you like this video, please drop me a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and join up in our ranks. And also, ring the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post new content. And also, please share your thoughts about Nemesis Prime in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.